It's easy to forget how controversial it was at the time, the 1979 Monty Python film Life of Brian, a witty biography of a fictional messiah called Brian, who was not unlike Christ in certain respects. Some called it blasphemous and wanted it banned. Well, back then, today's guest editor, Michael Palin, and his Python colleague, John Cleese, appeared on a BBC TV chat show, Friday night, Saturday morning. They talked about reaction to the film, and it wasn't quite the discussion that either of them was expecting. So for this programme, the two of them sat down and watched that discussion again for the first time in over 30 years. <laughs> With us tonight, another one-third of Monty Python, John Cleese and Michael Palin. I prepared for it quite carefully. I thought this is going to be quite a tough one, and we've got to have our arguments sharp. We've got to know exactly what we're saying. I think sometimes the impression has been given that it was sort of life or death, and would the film work or not? I never felt it was that important, but mm. I thought it was important to make points and to explain to people really what we were trying to do in the movie, yeah. because a well, lot of people didn't get it. Oh, uh, and we hadn't really had to do that had we in, in no many not of the really because we just done press it was showbiz yeah. press yeah. was it funny wasn't it funny there was a certain amount of the reaction i remember i think the telegraph liked it very much other papers thought it was good but we'd not actually argued with the no. church we i didn't know what the church's attitude was going to be that's what I felt when I turned up there. I think that's right, and we uh, suspected we'd get a certain amount of flack, but I think we felt that the position that we had was a pretty reasonable one. And our guest reviewers are Mark Muggeridge and Mervyn Stockwood, the Bishop of Southwark. Why lampoon death? I think this is the thing that really is, uh, you know, sort of worried me. Uh, I don't think I would make a farce about Auschwitz. Uh, or of death, and I mean, whatever we think about Jesus, we may think he was the son of God, we may think he was a mistaken fanatic, but it was a pretty shattering thing what, what happened, the, the, the crucifixion. Watching it again just now, for mm. the first time for all those many years, I was just astonished, first of all, at how stupid they were, Mm. And secondly, how boring it became, mm. because there was no interchange at all. There was just this relentless um, recital of the fact it was a squalid, tenth-rate little movie that would soon mm. be forgotten. I simply don't think it was worthy of you. It was the sort of thing, as I say, that at Cambridge, the footlights did on a damp Tuesday afternoon. Uh, or the lower fourth when I was a schoolmaster. Uh, it was astonishing to me just to go on and see themselves, yeah. see those guys who mm. must, at mm. some stage of their lives, been highly intelligent human beings, doing so badly. Well, Muggridge, of course, the great iconoclast in yes, the of 30s course. and 40s, editor of Punch, a man who sort of, you know, could, could subvert anything. His, 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 you know, that was what he was about. He was critical, he was a polemicist. He seemed to think mm. that by just going on and on about the reincarnation of our Lord, as though that was going to, yes. as it were, sway He's anyone's opinion. He was rate. just trotting out the, 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 the stuff without any hope of any kind of but, intellectual persuasion. And we would absolutely deny, at least I would, that yeah. there was any attempt to say you should not believe in Christ. What mm. we're saying is take a critical view, find out about it, don't just believe because somebody tells you to. Somebody in the pulpit says something, question it, work it out yourself. You're seriously suggesting that if someone saw that film, say a young mm -hmm. kid who knew nothing about mm -hmm. the Gospels or about history, mm -hmm. that the figure of Christ that would emerge from it, this story of the Incarnation, would be a noble one, um, would be... He would have to yes. sort it out for himself. And, you and he, would, he would have to, for example, work out, I mean, does one accept every word in the Bible? In a mm. Sermon on the Mount, did they get it all right when Mark mm. wrote it down 30 years later? <laughs> I mean, was... was it <laughs> I mean, you were very good, I thought, on the... Remembering school and what oh. you were taught at school. When I got into writing this film, and we all had exactly the same reaction, we started to discover mm. a lot of stuff about Christianity, and I started to get angry. Because I started to think, why was I given this rubbish? 
this tenth-rate series of platitudes <laughs> were the interesting things to have discussed. Mm. There were factual and things. You feel nobody the ever told me. You feel nobody the... ever told me that they don't know what language the mm. Gospels were written mm. in. Yeah, that they you... don't even know who wrote them, mm. and they're not even sure what cities they were. Well, then you in. must have read very superficially at your school. Uh, your, look, John, it's very bad luck for you. But you see, I used to go to Clifton College to preach very often when you were there. <laughs> The reason that it had a kind of unity to it that a lot of other stuff didn't have was that we all kind of agreed on what religion wasn't. I don't yeah. think for a second we would have agreed on what it was. Yeah. But because we all saw what mm. was wrong about religions, mm. we were able to mm. produce something that was a comprehensive kind of tease mm. and criticism of how people follow leaders, often practicing the exact opposite mm. of what the founder of the religion mm. preached. I am very confused and perturbed by a religion an established religion in this country where people can go into church on a Sunday morning and the same people can sing hymns and say prayers and at the same time these people can stand by while their money is spent making bombs, making guns. I think the sad thing was that there was absolutely no attempt at a proper discussion, mm. no attempt to find any common ground and it mm. remains the case now. There's very little interesting discussion or talk about religion. Mm. Well, I would have said that it was fairly equal in, in an odd way when I was there because I remember feeling the audience were enjoying them in a way, were, were quite applauding some of their remarks. And, and their I think jokes. early on the audience but was perfectly friendly By the end, them. and I think, yeah. I think the final remark of Mervyn Stockwood fingering his cross and saying, I hope you make your 30 pieces of silver, that made me feel we've won this, I'm afraid. And we went off, and I was, as you could tell, pretty... Sort of you were quite shirty by normal pain standards. I, I was very shirty by normal pain standards, yeah. And the bishop said to me, as soon as we got off, he said, I thought that went rather well. You have succeeded in reducing something which has inspired the greatest art into something which is presented in terms of the lowest art. If you That's your feet. Well, That's your you set up your own terms that we have to influence people. We're not saying we want to influence no, people. I don't. We're trying to make them laugh, make yes. them happy. I mean, yes. it's, it's, that's something that helps. Gentlemen, I'm going to have to call a horse. I'm very sorry. I think you've made people happy and made them think and made them laugh. And, uh, <laughs> I, I think we'll I, make them talk about it. I can't well, you'll, get your 30 pieces, <laughs> you'll get your 30 pieces of silver, well, I, 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 I'm quite sure. <laughs> Looking back there at a discussion about life of Brian, um, well, the Reverend uh, Richard Cannon, Professor Richard Burridge is with us, Dean of King's College London and Professor of Biblical Interpretation. And I think you've organised, you're organising a conference for next year. Jesus and Brian, what have the Pythonists done for us? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Well, good morning to you. Who won, ultimately, do you think, that particular argument, discussion about life of Brian? Oh, there was no doubt. I watched it at the time. I've watched it many times since. Um, the performance by the Bishop of Southwark and Michael Muggridge was embarrassing. Um, and uh, the joy of it was, was seeing Michael Palin get uh, incandescent by normal Palin standards, as he was put it. <laughs> um, I, I was just so, watching it again, so uh, disappointed that there wasn't the real discussion that they wanted, that many of us had wanted to have about the film. I, I didn't feel that Bishop and Markham Rogers even paid them the courtesy of clearly of having watched the film properly. Bishop but, 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 but I mean, I think you you believe the film was a more sophisticated take on our interpretation of Christ's life than was perhaps recognised by those of us who just went and laughed at the time. Well, as they made it very clear in the interview and subsequently and, and in the various diaries, it wasn't a take on Christ's life. And they wanted to do Jesus Christ lust for glory and decided that when they read Jesus, they couldn't actually make fun of him. What they do is make fun of Brian, who quite clearly isn't Christ at the start of the film, the bit the bishop missed. Right. Um, because there's another manger with <laughs> The the wise men they, they, go to, they go to Mandy and then they go to the wrong manger. And, and of course, and there's the bit at the Sermon on the Mount where he's saying, blessed are the peacemakers. And at the back of the crowd, there's Brian and Mandy saying, blessed are the cheesemakers. Um, it, it, it's a way of taking uh, the mickey out of the way organised religion, the way uh, people follow people blindly. Judea at the time was full of pretend messiahs. I should know, Lord, I followed many of them as one of Cleese's lines. And it's absolutely typical of that and the internecine warfare that was going on between the various Jewish liberation groups against the Romans, which is seen in, in, in the different popular fronts and so on. <laughs> so, so much of that was, was extremely accurate. It was a really interesting discussion of, of why was Jesus different from the Bryans uh, and all the other people that were around at the time, Judas, Judas and so on. It would have been a much more interesting discussion. 
Very interesting. Well, there's the, uh, I suppose, the modern take on it. Uh, Richard Burridge, thank you for coming in. And uh, Michael, thanks for looking back on that, uh, that discussion Friday night, Saturday morning, all those years ago. Thanks.